What's up folks, it's Arleman again. So we are now in part two of my beginner's guide. I was thinking about doing an intermediate guide, but there's still stuff that basic players need to understand with playing the game. So this is the same account that I've been using. I have made a couple of additions. Um, one of the rewards, if you remember the Coco's rewards, one of the rewards you actually get gives you a summon ticket right here. That's premium summon. There's one that's a, a 10 summon as well. Um, but in the 10 summon, I was actually able to get Yan, uh, Kang Rim. So if you guys remember last time, we had cleared the first adventure area. And it's really important to prioritize normal mode adventure. Um, you have access to hard mode, but you really don't want to do that next. You want to keep moving forward because that's actually what's going to unlock a lot of these locked abilities. Not to mention it will continue to raise your account level. So my account level is now 10, so I have access to February, which increases my pirate encounter rate. So we're going to go ahead and get those up. Hopefully it won't bug out on me again. And as you can see, it's the success rate it does go down. This is a big one because this is the pirate encounter rate. And you see right now it's been activated and it's blue. So now I have pirate encounter rate up. I have a permanent plus 15 to defense, uh, physical defense, magic defense, and hit points for all of my characters. And January, which if you remember the one of these was bugged, all I had to do is reset the client, but this gives me an additional plus 15 attack, three attack speed, and 30 crit. And all damage and adventure goes up to 2%. So our next one's going to be at 15, and this is all resistance. This one is one of those things that you can kind of skip because the buffs aren't really that great. The really important one, April is great. Boss battle damage up. If you look at those stats, those are awesome. Um, May is decent, but you June air battle damage. This is PvP, but these stats are also good. Anything that gives you attack speed and accuracy is good and this is the big one 35 which is another pirate encounter boost okay so so characters level 10 now when you when the game server is on utc so at 8 p.m which the game servers reset at midnight utc which i'm on the east coast so that's about 8 p.m now there is a there's a lot of daily activities that you can do that actually doesn't cost energy. Remember how I said the uh, Aeons, or energy as it were, is one of your most valuable resources. As you see, I'm down to 2 out of 60, and it's basically just because I've been running Adventure to try and unlock some of this stuff for this video. So you saw me clear this normal mode, um, Astoria. So the second area is the Starship. I've also cleared this area as well. Um, no grinding, mind you. The troops are actually that powerful. So once you get all three stars, uh, you can get a new summon. And this is as far as I've gotten in Mount Sky. But I wanted to kind of illustrate to you something as far as why these paths are important. Is that... We'll go to the next area, which is Lumen. Um... I guess they don't show it, uh, but some of these areas will actually unlock various options as well. Like, for example, now your training is available at level 15. This is account level. Forge is not yet available, um, but we've almost unlocked everything. So, as I was saying, daily activities. First of all, every time you lock 
uh, every time you lock on, log on, you want to grab your bonus rewards. So I've already grabbed one. Always, always, always grab energy. I cannot stress that enough. Likewise, you have a new page called Buffs. Now Buffs, when you get an account level 10, you can use, and this is actually where you can check the server time as well. So every hour you can use one of these three buffs. Of course, these are only available at account level 15 and account level 20, but this is a 50% EXP buff. It's not really that important right now because we currently have an EXP event, um, like a hot time going on. New players for 24 hours, you get boosted XP. So don't worry about using that buff until that's gone. But if you ever want to see if there's a hot time buff up, open your window and it will be up here. So this is uh, character uh, Alunix. Okay, so we want to click on the event. We want to do our seven day login. So there's another hundred rubies. We want to check our launch event. Now, if you remember previously, we'd gotten all of the adventure clears done but now we have leveled up to level 10, so we're gonna clear. We're gonna grab all of these Alun's lights, and I'm gonna show you where those are used. Okay, so we got those, there's no new news. All right, so we've gotten all of this stuff. Let's go back to our mailbox. Again, remember, also be careful of clicking too quickly or pressing too quickly. Sometimes this lags out and you can accidentally pick up your stored energy. Uh, also realize that you anything that's in your inbox, unless it's a purchased item, uh, is on a timer. So while we have a lot of energy stored, we are want to make sure that we use it. But these are kind of like emergency rations in a way. So as you can see, I still have all of this energy saved up. I haven't used anything. All I've done in the game has been with our native regeneration. So still two out of six, but we're not gonna get any of that stuff. Um, so now we have a lot of friends or a decent amount of friends. So we're gonna collect those friends points. Okay, so we've done daily login, um, let's go ahead and go to our friends list and I have eight out of 30 friends, not bad so far. So we're going to send to all and that's going to give me five friend points each as well. Not to mention whatever they send me in the mailbox. Okay. So next, what we want to do, let's go ahead and click on missions. Account has reached level 10. We've upgraded our Zodiac. As you can see, we're 500 plus uh, premium currency so far. We've gotten five Aloons. We've sent three friend points. So the next one is complete adventure. So I've only done 11 adventures so far um, since the servers reset. Air battle is the PVP and chaos tower, um, but these have not been unlocked yet. So we are going to go back to go to challenge mode and these are the events um, that you can do that don't require energy uh, actually I take that back boss battle is the only one that requires energy so we're gonna go to light your temple temple first and what this does is every day of the week a new temple is open okay Monday through Friday Saturday and Sunday you can select any one of these okay um, it is a little bit misleading uh, because you have to look at what the temp what the time says since the game is on UTC if you're playing in North America their Thursday ends in 21 hours it is not even Thursday here yet it's only about 9 p.m. Eastern so my Wednesday is their Thursday. So just keep an eye on what day is actually open. So these are what we call skill seeds. Skill seeds are what you use to increase the rating or the star rating, the star level of your heroes. So Thursday is open, so we're going to do Thursday support. Now you have to clear these in sequence. 
which means you have to he, he, uh, clear easy before you can do normal. So you clear previous stage first. So this is our support seed. So we're going to go ahead and enter. And for the most part, you can auto these. Just make sure that you've got a sensible party. And turn these down so you can see what they actually are. And we've got the Coco's task done. So we're going to get our little treasure chest there, and it actually gives us five of every seed. Now, don't use those until you're absolutely ready, okay? Because they are very hard to come by. Um, now that we've gotten it cleared, we can actually progress to normal. But as you see, the amount of seeds go up. Every time you go up, it goes up by one. So easy mode will net you one seed. Normal will net you two, hard will net you three, and adverse will net you four. But you have to progress through the other stuff. So now here we can, we've cleared easy, so we can actually do normal. Um, but to do normal, now we either have to wait until the weekend or the next Thursday, or we can pay 60 rubies to, to do it. So this is one of the only things that you should be spending your rubies on, because these items are so important and they're so hard to, they're so slow to come by. Every opportunity to get them, get them. All right, so we're going to do manual here. I'll use this. Galactic Flash. These bigger guys are a lot harder and they have more buffs, as you can see, not really hitting them really hard. But, and of course, as you progress, you're going to be able to one shot these things. But since this is a brand new account with good characters, all right, so. I'm going to show you what Freya's ultimate looks like. Freya gives you one turn of complete immunity until your character's moving in. Fahrenheit's uh, ultimate basically provokes all enemies, and any damage that's done to anyone in the party is redirected to him. Oh, 
Okay, so we have two seed, two ninety Alun seeds, and um, two support seeds. Okay, um, at this point you don't want to spend any more simply because, as you notice, the right side all the actual role specific seeds are vanished, and all you have are Alun seeds now. So we're basically done with this particular activity. Okay, next activity is Dimensional Rift. So you really want to have a good team for this. Uh, Kang Rim is not all that useful for this, so we're going to go ahead and put her in. Now, Dimensional Rift is basically a horde mode. And for, when I did it yesterday, I only got to wave two, and it only gave me five, five rubies. But you can make a lot of, a lot of money uh, in this. Uh, you can play for a total of 12 turns, or if you fail, to complete the round within the 50 turns allotted. So we are going to... wondering if I should put another DPS in there. I already have a shielder, have a healer. No, we'll, we'll keep this for now. We'll see how we do. So the game will want you to skip to wave 2 always start from the beginning because every round you get an option for buffs or currency either money or rubies and if you're not able to clear the turns then you're not going to be eligible for the rewards um, I don't have units that are strong enough to auto this so we are just going to manual it manual it very quickly troops that have AoE potential are going to be your best friends here Also, make sure you're paying attention to the order of the enemies as well, because remember, you want to try and kill these things. Your rating is based on your turn level. So we're going to swap turns. All right, since we have nine points and she's got her super ready. Not super, super strong yet, but it's enough to take a good chunk out of these guys. Also, your buffs carry over. Don't worry so much about efficiency until you get further on in the game. As you see, I cleared it in 26 points. And look, okay, I can get five rubies just for that wave. <clears throat> All right, so we are going to use and abuse the system. See if we can hit... All right, since all those guys were close by, I was able to hit them all with that attack. And as you can see here, we'll be able to flip over soon and use our ultimate. So AOE characters are really your best friends for these particular fights. So pretty good. We cleared out a lot of a lot of guys, and she's only going to get stronger too. So uh, 
Okay, so 35 out of 50, I think that's going to be a C. Okay, look, we get another 5 rubies. See where I'm going with this here. Don't know if, how much further I'm going to be able to get because these characters are still very low. And they don't have a lot of equipment, and none of their skills have been upgraded yet. But we're going to try our best. As you see, these mobs are significantly higher than my guys, so doing damage is going to be really difficult. I don't know, this is going to be close.
Whew, we did it with five turns less, so I think that's a that's a that's a D. Actually, not even a rating. So uh, let's increase our crit rate. Don't know if we'll get through this wave, but we'll see. These are like way higher. Yeah, I don't think we're going to make this one. Alright, I think this one's going to be a bust, but we got to see it through to the end. They either have to kill the whole party, or we have to run out of turn. Here, we'll just put it on auto. It's probably the fastest way to get through it. Okay, so it's over. Now we got a total of 10 rubies from it, and we got 60,000 uh, credits. So not too bad. I've gotten, I've broken 400,000 uh, from this before, but it's pretty much your, your daily injection of money as you play. Now, as far as boss battles are concerned, um, I have cleared the first stages of a couple of these guys. So let me see, where is my team? That's my team. Okay, so I'm just going to see, let's see, is no, my team level is not high enough for this yet. But this also takes currency. As you see, it takes a total of six. So generally, you don't really want to go into boss battle until you're you're pretty ready for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear stage three one more time, just to show you guys what it's like. Um, boss rush mode will consume all of your tries and it will give you entries, but it gives you a 400% drop rate. So as you see, not enough Aeons. I only have six. But at this point, when you're at stuff like this, then you can say, oh, wait a minute, I got this. So we're now at 62. All right, we're going to enter. We're going to do boss rush mode. And here we go. Also, Boss mode never starts in auto. Adventure mode and the other modes, if you're in auto in one mode, it will carry over. Do not accidentally click up there thinking you're turning it off because it will put you on auto and you will lose valuable turns. Now, boss mode, the actual boss fights have different stages, different mechanics from adventure mode. They're a lot harder. So in the index, it actually gives you a layout. So whenever you're challenging these guys, always make sure that you are up to date on what they do.
Okay, so this is going to be a pretty easy one. Let's make sure Stella gets our Galactic Blessings up. Now the trick with this fight is that he's going to spawn two little pods, and if you don't kill the pods before he goes again, they will give him buffs. If you have crowd control, you can actually prevent him from moving at all. So as you see, he's going to summon these two pods. You'll see what happens when he doesn't have them. He just kind of goes, hmm, where'd they go? And he takes soul damage. Now, King Rim is a debuffer, and he has an ability here that allows to restrain the target. It's at 100% chance with Mark of Death. Mark of Death is a passive that happens if he attacks the same target three times in a row. But it's a 50% chance to go off normally. Ah, and you see, he just got hit with it. So he is now bound for two turns, which means he can't do a thing, which means it's time for me to unload. Make sure I heal everybody up. So the reason why I switched to Kangrim there is that I want to get that third hit in. And as you see, he now has Mark of Death. And now we're going to swap back to him. And before his restraint is up, we're going to see if we can bind him again. He resisted that turn, but it's okay. We'll have another attempt. All right, so we got him bound again for two turns. Now we're going to hit him this. So Kangrim's shtick is that if he has Mark of Death, he, this move will instantly kill the enemy. But since this is boss rush mode, these guys have instant kill immunity. So this works. The strategy actually works in adventure mode fine, but it does double damage to these things when the mark is up. As you can see, pretty big chunk just went flying. Let's see if we can bind him again. He resisted, but that's okay, because we got one more turn. 
All right, so he switched phases. Now, if he was bound, we could actually push the phase without him actually spawning these things. But this is okay because we got plenty of... main thing we got to do is get rid of these pods. And yes, use Kangrim for this. Don't worry about binding him. When the pods are out, they have to be your priority. I'm just going to spawn another one. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, well, we're just going to have to take this into overdrive. Okay. Besides the technicality of my tank dying, we were able to get him down, and since we did boss rush mode, we get 400% loot, which, as you can see, one, two, three, four, four legendary pieces of equipment. So, I think that's a, I think that's pretty good. All right, just be aware that if you do the uh, rush mode, if you fail, you lose all three of your entries. So now that we've got some good gear, uh, let's start equipping our heroes. So I already had the bow and the arrow from yesterday's attempt. So we want a third piece, so we're going to equip his helmet, and that gives us a set bonus of a 10% attack speed for two turns when attack lands as a crit. So pretty good stuff. And okay, so he's good for now. All right, so let's look at our AOE damager.
Hmm, let's see, do I have a pair of decent pair of boots? Not really. Okay, so actually, you know what, this, so if I want, hmm. So this is a little suboptimal, but I need to get the crit rate for her, because she's my AoE damager. Alright, I think our healer's good. Oh, she doesn't have anything equipped. Let's see what auto does. Uh, that's alright, actually. Let's switch some of these weapons out. That actually drops my attack. Well, this will do for now. But as you can see, gear makes a huge difference in getting your, your characters uh, up and running. So let's see if we can make any skill books yet. We cannot, because I don't have enough pages. So for missions, we've cleared the temple. We've done the dimensional rift. So, uh, Air Battle, Chaos Tower, which we have not yet unlocked. So as you see here, we got to clear Mount Sky for PvP. We've got to clear Lumen Area for Chaos Tower. Moby's Dungeon and World Boss are coming soon, and I am not in an alliance yet on this character. But I do have one on my main account. Look at that. So anybody looking for an alliance? Okay, now that we've got some pretty decent gear, again, we're now on the timer. We got 264,000. We're going to keep moving forward. All right, so we've got we've got tank, healer, debuffer, AoE attacker, and um, single target melee DPS. So, let's see how we do. All right, now for this, um, we're going to go to auto, and I'm going to turn off everybody's skills except for Anare. So we'll see if her AoE is going to be enough to clear this area quickly. All right, so it's not. So we're just going to turn everyone's skills on.
Also, it's not bad to take a look at your Coco's reward, your Coco's. So it says here, evolve an Illuden to four star once. So do we have any three stars here um, that could use evolution to four star? Uh, four star, four star, four star. Uh, she is still three star. And for the purposes of this, we're just going to do the upgrade. 29. Huh. That's what it looks like. I highly don't recommend you use that, but for the purpose of brevity, we're going to do that to just kind of move things along. So she should be, she should level this next turn. Now, early on, I guess it would be okay for you to utilize um, those other lower level Illunes to power up your primary teams. But generally, you want to reserve them um, for Illune's Light. See, she does enough damage with it, it just needs to be upgraded. Okay, so we should be able to upgrade her for that next quest. So let's see here, Coco's quest, evolve a... Alright, so she's now level 30. 
So when you go to evolution, as you see here, this is what the skill seeds are used for. All right, so you have a loon seeds and skill seeds. Since she's a rare, it doesn't take a lot. Uh, if it's a legendary, it's twice as much. And now she's learned her second passive. All right, so we're going to scrap and loon. And then that's going to be our next reward. Um, so as a new player, your priority is getting through normal mode and getting through Coco's tasks. So it's asking to do a, a light summon. Um, our loons are here, so we have 2,626. Uh, we're going to summon a rare loon. Pastor Marcus. I would have preferred to do a uh, <laughs> an epic, but not too worried about it because we got the ru rubies and got another hundred for the task completion. And we are in area three, so we're going to collect these two. Look at this. Look how easy this is. All right, so we've already done Dimensional Rift for today, so we can't complete that. Um, so yeah, that was a mistake on my part. Make sure you're looking at Coco's tasks first, because certain things like this you can lock yourself out of before you actually get to the task itself. But we have 638 currency so far. We haven't spent a dime. All right, we're going to keep pressing on. Oh, that's right. I needed to check uh, NRA's passive. Now, for single target stuff, you can probably turn everybody's skill on. Should have brought my shielder. Okay, so I want to show you guys a little trick. So you see, he's got the mark of death icon. This is where Yin Kim really shines, because enemies are, are not immune to it. So he's going to instantly die. Bye bye Instant death. Even works on the last boss. Okay, 
Yeah, it's starting to get a little harder. This is the boss of the third area. So, I don't feel like messing with this guy, so we are going to kill him. Outright. I'm 
Yeah, it's cheesy. <laughs> but you know what? It works. This unlocks PvP, our next activity that does not take energy. Okay, so you want to set an attack team and a defensive team. Defensive team is basically who players have to fight against when they are fighting against you. Right, so let's put this to charge. Alright, that's good enough for an attack team. Okay, so the way PvP works is these take a currency called Valor. Um, it takes 10, you get 10 out of 10, you get Valor every couple of minutes as well, just like energy. So we are going to hop into. It's kind of strange. Alright, list is backwards. You always want to do the easiest ones first. And you can auto these as well, so... as you increase in the rankings these are um, developer generated because you can see the name Aloon to Loon 7 these are actually aren't real players uh, sets yet at least I don't think so first of all they've got nothing but ad no nothing but legendaries and they aren't very good at kidding them out You notice it's the exact same enemies every time.
Okay, and you can reset for... Now we're playing... I think we're playing real players? Yeah, I believe so. Every five victories, you will get a bonus to um, Valor. Now, the tokens you get in PvP can be exchanged for all kinds of useful items, uh, including energy. Yeah, I don't know why Stella won't put her shield up using auto, even though she can use it, so that's kind of why I switched it off. Yeah, now we're fighting the level 40s. Oh, it's over. That is to be expected when you take 30s up against 45. But uh, we did complete our achievement. And we got some energy from that. And now we're back over 60. So I kind of, and now we can claim some more rewards. So I know this video is a little long in the two. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, but the main takeaway from this is when you start, once you have a decent team going from re-rolling as well as the um, free select summon and the various free summon tickets that you get as a new player, um, you really want to focus on f on Coco's tasks and unlocking your other ability, your other activities um, that you gain through leveling your accounts. Uh, because these are things that you want to do every day. You want to do the Lytra Temple for your class seeds for upgrade. You want to do boss battle for your equipment. You want to do dimensional grift for gold and rubies. Uh, once you get Chaos Tower, as you said, you get rubies, summon shards, etc. And air battle. Um, and I can actually show you what's in the shop. This is purchasable with the PvP tokens. You can only buy Anons once a day. Hopefully they change that. But you can actually get Soul Stones for um, another Legendary, Enhancement Stones, um, random summons as well. And of course, you know your... I don't even think I have anything. I don't have any items for Special Event yet. 
So anyway, there are many, many, many activities you can do in the game that doesn't require energy, but your priority should be focusing again on Coco's tasks and moving yourself through normal mode in the story because this unlocks certain things. Uh, I will talk about, and that's basically it for the beginner stuff. Um, when you've managed to get as far as you can, which most players won't have really struggle until they get to Lumen. Lumen is when things start to get really, I wouldn't say difficult, but more complicated because you have enemies that heal themselves. You have enemies that will do a lot of debuffs and crowd control as well. So when you kind of get to this point is where you're into intermediate play. Uh, you really won't be able to auto through that. And at that point, you want to go back to the beginning of Astoria and click yourself over to hard mode. Hard mode is where the bulk of your daily activities are going to happen. Um, but I'm going to cover this in the intermediate video. Um, probably won't, that probably won't get published uh, until next week since I've got to work. But I hope that this has been informative and enjoyable. So I look forward to doing the next video. If you guys have any comments, uh, like or subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Take care.